I'd like to thank Hypercation for bringing such a nice audience. Today, I'd like to talk about um, does Apple search apps work for hyper-casual gamers? It's quite a new area for most of you guys. Uh, and luckily, we will expect how Apple search apps will be a how Apple search apps could be a profitable channel for hyper-casual gamers. So today, I have an agenda. First, also, I'd like to talk about um, what mobile action does, and I'll put my focus on Apple search ads and how to achieve good results. Well, before I do that, uh, is there anybody who experienced Apple search ads? Okay, so then that's going to be a good ride. So, the company overview, mobile action, has been founded in San Francisco back in 2013 and our focus was then first app store optimization. Like years later, we added a lot of intelligence tools to help app marketers like yourself in the industry. And then in 2019, we become Apple's official partner in campaign management and at the moment, we have $20 million monthly spend, which is kind of equivalent of 10% of all Apple search ad spending happening at the moment. So this brings us enough understanding of how Apple uh, operates here in this new ad business, and I think I, I can provide you here valuable insights. Well, again, regarding mobile action, these are some of our partners. I also wanted to put the Crazy Labs team, Ruby Games, Coda, they're, they're here in this organization. Um, we are partnering with them and helping them to achieve good results. So, the first part, why should we focus on Apple search ads? Well, I brought this screenshot from Mobile Action's ad intelligence platform. This is a, 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 a hyper-casual game, I randomly picked it. And you see all of their UA activities focusing on different ad networks. So this game is, you know, for, is putting their efforts on 34% of AdMob, Unity, Facebook, and other DSP distributions are also presented here. This complexity tells me, well, this is obvious, hypercasuals focus on UA, so this is their, uh, how they make money, right? So, and then, again, in the next slide, we just can provide what's happening with, uh, in, a, in a life cycle of a hyper-casual game in, in their whole entire life cycle. So you see here a distribution share graph, how they are allocating their budget to different ad networks, in, in, I mean, and their the intensity and their creative, of the creative activities. Even more, we can also identify which countries is their main priority and how they are operating there. So the, uh, the reason I bought this here to show you how it can get complex uh, with UI activities on, uh, on, for hyper-casuals uh, in terms of user acquisition. Another stats that I want to give, this is again from Mobile Action Stats. So this covers 2021 Q1. So you, show, you see here the gaming apps that are actively uh, running advertising in different uh, platforms like iOS or Android. But the interesting part here, top 50 advertising apps are, is, is, has used 12,533 unique creators. So this is again a good insight. It tells us, I mean, you put a lot of effort there. Well, um, I get this stats from, again, Mobile Action, and at the moment we cover over 31 million creators, and we're adding 2.5 million creators every day. And this brings us, uh, uh, to, uh, this brings us an opportunity to understand what hypercages are doing. Well, after that, here's why we should focus on Apple search ads. These stats coming from Apple's uh, own website. So Apple says that 70% of all App Store visitors who see search to find apps, and 65% of all iOS downloads becomes after a search. Imagine how much money is spent by hypercasuals uh, in the industry, but still 65% of all downloads becomes after a search. 
That's why you should be present there. Otherwise, someone else will be stealing your traffic. So, well, how are we gonna be successful on Apple search ads? The answer, the answer is quite simple. Creating campaigns with right strategy. The strategy is designed around Apple's hierarchy uh, brought to us uh, in terms of campaigns, ad groups, keywords, and match types. So, I don't know if you were, um, if you did have any um, experience in search marketing. We just target the keywords that we want to be seen, and we just put a bid there, and Apple just puts us in an auction, and if we win the auction, our ad is seen there. So once you make a search, at the first place, your app will be appearing. So, but uh, to be able to use Apple's attributes properly, this is what you see here, the ideal campaign structure, that, I mean, recommended structure that you can also utilize. Well, first of all, um, we need to build a campaign structure that we'll be focusing on brand, generic, competitors, and discovery campaigns. For brand ones, well, 65% um, downloads coming from Apple search apps, um, no, uh, iOS and search. So, but in hyper cases, 70% of all searches are from branded terms because you're spending a lot of money in other channels and people go to App Store and search for brand. So that's why you need to be bidding your own brand terms. Otherwise, your competitors will be getting it. So we use here exact match and the second campaign is a, a competitor one. Well, others are trying to win your traffic by bidding your brand keyword. Well, we're gonna do the same so that you can acquire relevant users to your app. And the other one, uh, generic keywords. People go and look for like heel games, I don't know, woman games, makeup games. So once they search this, they have already an intent to your game and you can easily capture them by bidding the right keywords on Apple searches. The last one is discovery. This is kind of a, 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 an algorithm that is provided by Apple. So basically, you just say, okay, Apple, just show my app that you think my app is relevant to. Once you start this campaign, Apple will start showing your app to the relevant keywords. That way, you're going to generate quite um, um, quality users with quite low prices. So this is the ideal campaign structure we always use and recommend to our users. At the moment, we're working with a lot of um, hyper-casual gamers, and we get really good results. Now, as I said, finding keywords is important. Well, at the moment, according to Mobile Actions data, only in US storefront, there are over 25,000 apps using Apple Search Apps. When it comes to gaming, it's around 8,000 apps. So, out of that, finding right keywords and targeting it is quite important. So you need to pick your keywords right and you need to be aware of what's happening there in terms of competition. In this screenshot, you see a, 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 a page from our platform where you can easily discover which app is bidding which keywords in which countries and how often. With, the, with their impression share, you can easily see, for example, what let's say, Rolex is doing to acquire users on app researchers. So this gives you enough understanding where you should focus first. Again, um, organic keywords, well, you uh, like, or, like it or not, uh, your app will be uh, getting rankings on different storefronts based on your app store listings. So these keywords will tell you um, which keywords you're ranking, well, that's good but also you have your direct competitors, you can easily investigate what's happening with your competitors' organic rankings. On top of that, uh, this organic ranking keywords will tell you what your potential users are searching for. By checking that area, you'll be able to know uh, what keywords you should be moving forward. Now, finding keywords is important. This is a screenshot we, from mid-February mid, uh, to the first week of March, like three weeks data, constantly adding new keywords, it helps you get a lot of impression. 
So this is how you move forward. Well, once we have idea structure, once we know what to focus on, which keywords we should move, the next part is understanding if they're bringing value to us. So tracking actual outcome is another story. Well, normally what you should be doing, most probably you're going to have your MMP, so a mobile measurement partners, at searches.com, so we bring your Apple searches data and your MMP data to one dashboard. Once you do that, you're going to be able to see which keywords or which ad groups, how much money you're spending on them, and subsequently, what is your return from those. By checking out this, having in one dashboard, you'll be able to optimize your campaigns accordingly. Well, one of the most uh, problematic issues on Apple search ads, well, you're running a lot of campaigns in different ad networks. Iron Source is here, or like we can say Bungle, we can go Facebook, we can go with Google. So these platforms kind of like a you know, self-attributed platforms. These platforms provide you returns, and accordingly they just try to uh, help you optimize your campaigns, but this is not how it, is, how it works on Apple search ads. So by bringing your data in one platform, uh, enable you to understand the returns. So, well, based on these returns, what you do is like tracking the performance. So, actually, once you integrate your MMP, um, you'll be able to track your ROI, ROAS, or like cost per app opens, whatever metric you're after. You'll be able to see them in the dashboard. Even more, some of our hyper casual gamers follow this strategy. So, let's say if a user finishes 10th level in the first day, then this user like brings a value to me, like $3, well good. Based on that, you can optimize your campaigns based on cost per first 10 uh, uh, level completed users. So with that inside, you'll monetize, literally monetize Apple searches easily. Another story, I mean, the funnels, uh, again, You'll have your games listed as someone will see your app, we call it impressions, then some of them will tap, then some of them will download, and some of them will open your app. After that, the engagement of the funnel starts. That level completed, or even if you're tracking your ad revenue with your MFP, you'll be able to see the results here in the funnel, and accordingly, the system easily help you detect where which parts of your campaign is performing or which are not. So this funnel optimization is also quite important. Well, um, optimizing the campaigns with automation rules. This is another feature, but what I'm about to say here, I mean, with automation rules or by yourself manually, you should be doing this. Because you're gonna have maybe thousands of different ad elements that you should be taking care of. Imagine you have your campaigns in United States, United States storefront, and you have four campaigns, you have maybe hundreds of different keywords, and all of them you place bits, and eventually you're gonna have metrics, impressions, cost per acquisitions, cost per installs, cost per tech level completed. But each item here will have its own um, metrics, and based on its metrics, you should be adjusting your bits. So with automations, we try to solve this here in a bulk way. Well, um, we, we, I told you we have $21 million spent, and I think 38% of it comes from gamers. So these are the um, problems that our clients have told us. Well, um, they're able to spend like maybe $1 million, $2 million to Facebook without putting a lot of effort on it. Or just, I just talk to I put from I, I, Iron Source. I tell him, okay, bring me $2 per user in the United States. Here's your money. Well, they try to handle it. But on Apple Search, it doesn't work that way. So that, it requires a lot of manual work. And well, um, it, I, I told about the United States four campaigns, but we're going to have like maybe tier one countries, let's say 10 of them. It's going to bring you 40 campaigns, like hundreds of different keywords. So, I mean, it's maybe impossible to do it on manual work, even though you have enough UA managers working for working on it. 
So saving time when managing campaigns is also another story. And well, the last one is making your optimizations based on real metrics in app conversion data. Normally, Apple search as practitioners goes to Apple's dashboard and try to optimize it, but the data Apple provides is the only downloads, like upper funnel data. The real matter is lower funnel. That's why we have automations. In the automation part, um, well, based on any metrics, you just can decide um, um, conditions, and based on these conditions, you get actions. Um, so, an example, let's say I am targeting uh, to get like 60 cents cost per install, which means cost per app opens. And if you pay more than that on in your United States storefront, well, you won't, be, you won't be making money. So based on that, you create, or the system creates for you, an automation cycle that takes all of your metrics into consideration and adjusts your bits accordingly. So the automation will work with that. So imagine 60 cents is your target. Well, the system increases the bits of the keywords with uh, statistics of CPI like 40 cents, but the bits will be increased to 20%. If your CPI cost per app opens, let's say, in between 40 and 60 cents, well, it's still profitable, but not that much. So then increase its bits by 10%. So these automation cycles takes care of everything, and you don't need to do it. You just check your data on the dashboard. Well, um, starting, I mean, until now, starting, uh, you know, managing Apple searches is, you know, it was the basics. But there are many different um, tactics we should be running. Um, the reason hyper-casual environment is quite, you know, fast changing. So there are a lot of new gaming games are becoming trends. The search terms, like search trends, is changing rapidly. So this is a an advanced campaign structure we use. So on the upper right side, you see the ideal recommended campaign structure, well it works. But on the other hand, I mean, even though you have enough manpower, you won't be able to uh, track the trending keywords, new searches, or your potential user searches. So at searches.com, we have different automation cycles that constantly find right keywords to your apps and add them to your campaigns automatically, like after that, optimize them according to your target metrics. So um, if you have, I mean, by the way, this is a really good structure. I mean, if you have any questions after this session, we can have a chat about that. We can detail it, examine it. Well, takeaways. So Apple Search Ads is an important channel for everybody, you need to find the right keywords. You don't want to miss the users who are searching your game or your genre. You should be there. 65% of all users be coming there. Uh, then you need to find your keywords, and then take advantage of ASA attributes, which means the campaigns levels, how you allocate budgets, how you group them, how you optimize, how you place your bids. You need to be taking care of that, and then obviously measure it. If you don't measure, you can scale up. So understand your key metrics in the funnel and optimize them accordingly. And last one, set up your automation rules based on ROAS maybe or whatever metric you're after and validate your data, recycle it and move this cycle again. Here in the last slide, you see how we take this. We set up we find keywords to scale up, we monitor it, and we optimize it, and we scale it up again. So, thank you very much for having time here. Do you have any questions regarding that? Well, good. Then, okay, send me an email if you know <laughs> anything. Uh, I actually want to ask you a question, so if you don't mind. Uh, so, yeah. of course, after you, this IDFA changes, I think lots of you know ad networks costs you know increase rapidly. We see you know Zynga, 
you know, announcing their CPA is increasing, their IRS and their stock just falls down like 20%. It's that important. So if you, you know, compare the cost between, you know, traditional ad networks and Apple search ads, you know, how do you see it for the hyper casual games? Well, um, I want to take this question and revert it back. Um, Apple is, guys, Apple is, you know, building its ad business. So um, we're in ad business as well, and we talk to a lot of ad networks out there, and we try to understand what's happening with Apple. Um, what we see in the market, Apple is putting new inventories. We're talking about search bar. Yeah, it's powerful. You need to be there. But Apple, in, on the other hand, is putting new inventories, like search tab campaigns. So you don't, you, you won't be there. For, you won't be picking keywords, and just you won't be saying only, okay, show me, show my app there. The thing, what, what's happening here? Apple is gonna present its new inventory. What is it? Apple has its own app at the moment, like News or like Stocks app. Now Apple is putting new inventories there for you to be seen there. The next step, what we expect, is Apple will get new placements from maybe your apps. So you're going to monetize through Apple as well. So now, entering Apple search ads is quite important. Well, in terms of CPAs, uh, um, now here, you don't, give, you don't create, you don't, um, create demand. There is already demand there. But once you go to other networks, uh, you try to generate demand, and that's why CPIs might be a little bit lower than that. When you just compare to Apple searches. Because, I mean, you, you're, while you're just you know, scrolling down on Instagram, you're going to see the ad, well, you click it and you download it. But here, although the cost per acquisition, let's say cost per download, is a little bit higher than other networks, there is an intent. The user is there to get an app like yours. I mean, a searcher just searches like car games. Your app is car game. Well, you should be there. In terms of in-app conversions, like cost per app opens or like ROAS, Apple is quite better than other networks. So we're working with a lot of gamers. So that's why they always push us a lot of pressure to help them. Uh, to increase their um, uh, you know, spending capacity on Apple searches. Got it. To actually follow up on that, I want to ask you, know, let's assume that I am a game developer and I want to start Apple search ads. And you know, I want to set up a campaign with a $5,000 budget. What's the first you know, couple of steps for me to take in? Well, um, good question. So if you're going to spend money on Apple search ads, well, um, I, I, took, I, mean, I didn't give the details in the presentation, but there are different layers, hierarchy on Apple searches. So there are campaigns, there are ad groups, there are keywords under it. So you, should, you can allocate your budget to campaigns. While you're doing this, you need to make your keyword research properly and you need to get insights. For example, you just picked 15 keywords regarding car games, you're going to see that Apple recommends this as well. We also have our own uh, data set. We tell how much money that a keyword would spend. And on top of that, we also show what is the competition on this keyword. So once you just set your keywords up, and once you know your budget, you need to allocate your budget according to, um, I mean, to, to be able to get more, I mean, a, a lot of keywords that you're able to spend money on. So if you spend money on a lot of different keywords, then you'll be able to optimize. If you don't let, if you let your campaigns allocate like like more than half of your budget to three three keywords, it won't work. The the essence here to set up a campaign structure that will make sure that you spend money on like maybe 100 different keywords, so that you can then allocate the budget to profitable ones. Other than that, it's gonna be like a one shot. One play game, one trick point. Yeah. That's it. All right, any other questions? All right then. Thank you, sir. Thank you.